Um, hello, everyone. So this is going to be our product. Um, and these are everyone in our group. Um, so this is the explanation of kind of like what our product is, kind of like an overview. Um, so this is an interactive product for the viewers, um, whether that be students or parents or really anyone. Um, so each book in our bookshelf has a link that leads you directly to the read aloud or free library website where you can read the book. Um, so our product is this online um, virtual bookshelf that kind of like acts as a real bookshelf where you can just like pick out a book and read that book. Um, uh, the books our group has chosen encourage growth in students first and second languages. Um, so all of these books are culturally responsive. Um, whether that be in language or culture, um, we tried to choose them all in culturally responsive ways, and we'll get more into that um, later. Um, and these books provide visuals for students as well as subtitles. Um, and so most of these are um, also read aloud books. So if students have um, trouble with their trouble with reading, uh, there is that op that benefit of having it being read aloud as well. Um, the books in our bookshelves are culturally responsive and incorporate many students' culture and histories. Um, like, like I said, um, all of these books are culturally responsive um, to just kind of like make students feel more in, um, included in the classroom. Um, so how will the bookshelf be utilized in the classroom? Um, so although this kind of seems static, um, it may be appeared to be static, um, students will be able to preview the book with the entire class. Um, the teacher could play a video of the book, uh, read a few pages, and create a week where they plan activities around two or more books to make students excited to read in small groups. Um, the teacher will demonstrate how to use the bookshelf. Um, students will have the option of using an online future to read the books or using the bookshelf in person. Um, for students who prefer using reading tools online, have visual impairments, or prefer audiobooks, can use computers. Um, and if students want to prefer, just prefer that in-person held copy, um, they will have that option as well. Um, MML, MLL students uh, will be able to read at their own pace, uh, be able to discuss what they have read, um, have context on the book before reading it, and progress in their reading goals. So the next slide, uh, how will the bookshelf promote inclusivity in the classroom? Um, this is very important when teachers have to shape the curriculum around uh, students, uh, ELL students. Uh, so step one, uh, students will have the opportunity to engage with small groups about the content they have learned. It's important that ELL students are able to socialize in small groups and uh, understand the content that they're learning. Uh, two, students will be able to read books that promote representation of their culture and first language. This is important, um, especially like when you're younger to have representation and for students to have confidence within themselves. Um, and also for students to understand that their peers in their classroom may look different, may come from a different background, but at the end of the day, um, everyone is equal and everyone should be respected. Um, step three, students will answer questions written on the whiteboard to promote further discussion. This is important because you can ask students to socialize in small groups. However, when they have questions, it will keep them on task and they're able to go more in depth about their own ideas. Um, so the next slide is what reading strategies will be used. So after students have selected a book to read from the bookshelf online or handheld copy, the teacher will do comprehension checks by chapter or per paragraph, depending on the student's reading capabilities. This could be something as simple as uh, the teacher checking in on a small group, having one student read a paragraph and asking that particular student or the students in the small group what the paragraph means or what the author is saying. Um, it also allows the teacher to help with any like 
uh, literacy struggles in vocabulary in particular. Um, step two, the teacher will provide books that support native language literacy. So this means that there has to be a variety of books on the bookshelf that um, either have two languages incorporated into the book or possibly even one native language incorporated in the book. Um, step three, teachers will verify that students read slower to ensure words are enunciated properly and to touch base on themes. Um, this is important at a younger age to ensure that students are announcing, enunciating their words properly so that their peers can understand what they're saying, also understand what they're saying, um, and to understand the themes of the book. Yeah. Students who read a lot faster um, can be harmful to students in a group who read slower or have comprehension struggles. They won't pick up on the themes as well. Um, step four, pre-learning words that will be used in the books is essential so students have context. This will also help students with their background knowledge. The teacher can create half of the week to be centered around key concepts that will be touched in the book. Um, this could be like uh, really advanced words that will be in a book. If the teacher knows that not all of her students will be able to pronounce a word or know what the word means, it can be brought up three days in advance before students will even get the chance to read a book so that when it comes time to read aloud, uh, students aren't as confused and that they have context and background knowledge built up. So this is the first look at our bookshelf uh, that we have created as a group. Um, the three books that I have chosen are at the top. Um, each book is either linked directly to a read aloud on YouTube, which is free, or a library online, which is also free. <laughs> uh, so Bright Star is a really great book that is partially in English and partially in Spanish, and it touches base on uh, immigration. Um, this could be really influential or and represent students in that target area population in your classroom. Front Desk is also a great book. Um, there's versions of it in English, versions of it in Mandarin, and versions in either or. Uh, this is also another book about immigration um, to America. Uh, Born on the Water is less of a book that's targeted for bilingual students, but it is a culturally responsive book that targets more of uh, African American population and teaches them about uh, West African history, um, in particular, before the Atlantic slave trade uh, took place. So it's very important for these students to know their culture and their ancestors and their beliefs, language, and more. The second shelf is my shelf, Alex. <laughs> um, the first book is the Egyptian Cinderella, which is another version of the Cinderella tale. Um, it is actually culturally around a, t um, a folklore from the Egyptian slash Roman side. And it tells a story about a slave girl in Egypt at the time and how she eventually gets to marry the emperor of the time. The second, this is this is important because it shows another version of Tale of Cinderella um, that is not normally told, especially because most Cinderella stories are told from a perspective of a European white woman that rises to the top. It's never usually, you would never really hear about it from a different cultural background. Then the second book I chose was The Rough-Faced Girl, which is about um, a, Native, a Native American girl who um, is always ridiculed by her blemishes on her face, as well as they were always, always making her cooking and um, and she eventually 
goes the way Cinderella usually goes is she marries, she gets married and she gains wealth and status, which is another Cinderella story, which I thought was also important to have multiple Cinderella stories told in different perspectives. The third book I picked was um, The Persian Cinderella, which is the same Cinderella story, except with um, a per, per, how do you say it, Persia? Persia? Girl? Um, that rises against her stepsisters through going out and rebelling by going to, I believe, I think it's a blue jug and she finds a genie and a prince in 15th century Persia, which is another version of the Cinderella story so that they have multiple story, uh, original story where they can relate to, yeah. <laughs> Um, and the bottom shelf are the three books that I chose, um, and I all three of these books are kind of based on diversity. Um, so the first one is a really short and sweet book called Stick and Stone, um, and it's kind of about this stick and the stone kind of like um, becoming really good friends, and they're using each other's like differences to like help their own situations. Um, they're just kind of like learning to accept each other. Um, so I thought that was like a really good book. Um, the next one is All Kinds of Children, um, which is a book that showcases that um, kind of like no matter how someone may look, um, like pretty much everyone is the same. Um, it really wants to emphasize that everyone really is the same. Um, and the last one is The Name Jar. Um, and this is a book about a uh Korean family that moves to America um, and uh, she's just kind of like struggling through that immigration process. Um, the book the, it's called the name jar because all of her classmates are trying to give her more of a easy or to pronounce um, name instead of the name that she is given so they want to name her something like Mary or something of much Ameri very American um, and so I, th I thought that was also a really good story. Uh, so this slide uh, is titled, Where Can Students and Families Find Books Listed in the Bookshelf? Uh, this is important if families want to continue to read these books with their children or students themselves want to. So their first option, if students and their families would like to finish the books listed in the library, parents will be given online access to the library via Google Slides. From this point, parents can access the links provided, which will direct them to read aloud. This service is completely free. So uh, parents who have internet access at home can ask the teacher, can you share this Google slide with me, this link? It would be just the bookshelf just for that, I guess, like week or theme or module, whatever. And they will be able to access the books and don't have to type it themselves or look for it. It'll be all right there for them. Um, their second option, teachers will have physical physical hard copies of the books in the library, at least two extra copies per book. If students do not have online access or financial means to buy the book, they can request to check the book out to read at home for the duration of the lesson. Uh, so this is important that if teachers want their students to read this outside of class or on their own time, that they have the books provided in person for those students. Option three, uh, lastly, students can find these books online for free using these following links. Uh, this would also be listed as a, another slide, possibly with the bookshelf. So parents and family and students also have access to these links. This is for students who probably don't wanna listen to the read aloud or are very proficient in reading um, on their own. Uh, these options, I guess, are for students who want to be more independent in their reading. Um, yeah. This slide is um, who benefits from this project and how. Um, this mostly benefits the students. Um, students can relate more to the main character in the stories. It is important for students to have representation. I know when I was growing up, 
a lot of books were based off of kids that were white. Um, there wasn't much representational background with other books. And so this gives them to see their own representation in their culture in a book. They not some stu some students don't even get that a lot still. So it's good to see that we were trying to move from that to get these kids represented in there. And this also gives students to um, other students to learn about other people's backgrounds and other people's cultures, making them more aware of what's going around on going around in their world. Um, students can as well learn along with other students faster. It is important to note that they are capable of this while also making progress in what they are comprehending. So students, they can, since the, sorry, <laughs> um, students, they can learn usually pretty well along with other students, but having multiple languages within the book, they might be able to comprehend it more where some or they might have difficulty if they see their own their first language being represented in a book or if they see themselves being represented in the book they might show more interest or if other students see that other things are being represented in the book they might get more intrigued with these things that it's not the same thing going over and over again um, books will contain multicultural elements. It could be based on other cultures and even multiple languages besides just English. This will also enhance a literature aspect in, of school. So most books are in schools are English based. So with having multiple languages in the books, this might enhance students to go more towards another language and learn more about other people's cultures. So this will enhance how they learn in school and the people that are around them at the moment. Um, group B's driving question was, what could we do to help students read better and help them understand along with the rest of the class? How do we create learning goals and important objectives for ELL readings in the classroom? Um, this question was inspired because it's really difficult to sometimes keep up in class and you see some students struggle. And I'm pretty sure some of us have seen it firsthand, um, especially with our practicum classes. The CRT principle and how it correlates to the driving principle Student-centered learning, student learning is the focus on this, is to focus on the student. So we are, as teachers, are trying to focus on how to help these students learn better and faster, and as well to see how we can help them in the future. To help students move forward with others and make sure they grow, this could be done multiple ways. I like how we, we represented is, we had the read-alongs as well as the physical copies and an online copy, which having multiple access helps students move faster with other students because they have multiple ways to learn this objective. So this gives the student chances to learn multiple ways because they can listen to it, they can look at it, or they can do it themselves. So they have multiple ways of learning this and move along with the rest of the class. And they could also take it home with them, making it more accessible towards them. This helps students with anxiety when it comes to learning. Um, seeing students when they have their language represented or their culture represented, it might reduce anxiety when it comes to learning and such a tight place and going at their own pace might also help if they can bring their books to home and continue reading at home it might reduce their anxiety in the classroom seeing like if they fall behind they can go back home read it or listen to it if they need to uh, the bookshelf gives them ch them a chance to learn at their pace as well as gives students multiple ways to read their book 
This could be virtually an audio and a physical copy. Yeah. 